This is Gamer Weekly, bringing you the latest of what the video game scene has to offer. On today's episode of Gamer Weekly, I have Alberto Santiago, and we're going to be talking about his game, Goat Punks. All right, and welcome to another episode of Gamer Weekly. Sorry about the episode not being there last week. A lot of technical difficulties, but this week we do have a show. And with me today is Alberto Santiago of Studio Canvas. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. So uh, we're at very different time time frames here. It's 8 in the morning for me, and it's 11? Yeah, it's like 11 p.m. at night right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying not to talk too loud to like, wake the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. this, this actually isn't the first show where uh, the other person had to talk as quietly as possible. Um, oh yeah, yeah. No, I had a I had a kid from uh, Pakistan who, uh, oh, right. who he has his own gaming company, and he was like, "I have to talk like this because it's like two in the morning right now." I'm like, "Dude, you could have told me, you know, hey, we could, we could do this at like a different time." But yeah, no, I appreciate that you're that you're staying up. And that you're uh, that you're willing to do this at this time. Yeah. So, uh, well, like uh, I'm actually a late um, worker, so you know I kind of keep going until like four in the morning. It's just uh, like I don't really, I'm not really like talking at that time though. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I generally work pretty late. <laughs> that's that's usually how it guess, goes for for game game yeah, developers. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's the habit when you're like. Um, working by yourself like on a project like this you just uh you just keep in, you just keep going as it as it flows and you're like uh it, it generally starts like um when you're trying to solve a problem and then you keep wanting to like say uh like i want to fix this problem but, like so before i go to sleep i just want to fix this problem but that kind of get keeps getting extended the time so i keep pushing it back until like oh just this I just need to fix this one more thing, and it just keeps getting pushed back and back. It's like it's like not, it's like morning now. I'm like, oh, I really got to go to sleep now. So that's generally what happens. Uh, I was about yeah, to say, so. yeah, no, I I can definitely uh, I can definitely relate to that. <laughs> so um, let's talk about your your game here. It's Goat Punks. What is Goat yeah. Punks for those that don't know? So Goat Punks is essentially. Um, you're controlling tiny little goats. It's a multiplayer game where you t- control tiny little goats and you have to get to the top of the tower. And then once you're at the top, you have to like defend your position by throwing down bombs and like all sorts of um, things. Once you're at the top, though, like you have to stay there for like 30 seconds to uh, to to win. It it can get quite tricky. So like everyone might gang up on you. Say Say you say you're up there and it's it's like ten seconds left for you to win. Everyone's gonna start gunning for you. They're gonna stop whatever they're doing, and then you know try and get you off the mountain just so they they all have a chance to like win it. So it's kind of like um, you get this element of uh, you know you gotta fend for yourself, but like at the same time people start cooperating when shit gets real, you know. <laughs> Right, so because it's a uh, King of the Hill multiplayer game. Yeah, yeah, like the the whole King of the Hill um, concept is not like it's very well known to most people. You know, like you you hear it about all the time with um, first person shooters, but no one's actually ever really made a real sort of King of the Hill where you're actually on a hill and you have to try and stay on top of it. And I thought this was like this is like genius because like no why hasn't anyone ever done this thing before i'm like oh, well <laughs> i'm gonna try and see how far this goes so i put this together and then it seems to be uh working quite well like uh when, whenever i get people playing this game at like conventions or like um developer meetups you always get like a, a large crowd like just, just screaming at each other you know like as soon as when when, when you get into the end game uh People start like uh, just screaming, oh, "Get him off the top! Get him off the top!" And you know, there's like this whole exchange where you can jump down and you can do like dirty tactics that way, and like bring up shields. So like, if people, if other goats are gonna 
uh, run past you or run into you. You can like bring up a shield and you can knock them off that way. So there's all these different sort of strategies involved when you're at the when you're at the very top. I've been trying to put this thing together for a while, but it's just uh, because I'm working on it by myself. It seems to be uh, quite challenging, I, I suppose, to divide up my time to like say push for. Um, uh, like like concentrate on like the art aspect of the game and like even the the programming and then the, even also like the marketing of the game yeah because uh, um cause, so when you when you take these games when you take this game to uh to a convention um what is some of the reactions that uh that you didn't expect getting from it um i suppose uh most most of the people tend to get super like excited and jump out of their seats and just like uh, in, initially when I made this game like it was kind of intended to be a mobile game but I it, it didn't quite work that well because it's it's uh it's not a game that like when you, when you play it like um I I built it online. And you can challenge other people online, but when you won against people online, it felt a bit isolating, and it didn't feel satisfying when you won the game. So I was about—I was actually about to give up on this game, like uh, last year. And then I kind of took a step back, and then I decided, well, let's let's actually try and make this into a game that I've always really wanted it to be. You know, something along the lines of like Smash Brothers or Bomberman, because those, those are the kind of games that I grew up with. You know, like I really love those games. Those, those are like my childhood memories. So, like, I, I grew up with those games, and I really love those kind of games. And so, I um, decided to see if I can make Good Punks into that type of game. Like, really push for that, uh, you know, that vibe, that energy. Right. That so, uh, that screaming at your neighbor. Um, yeah, kind yeah. of vibe. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think that's a pretty good vibe to have for uh, for a local <laughs> multiplayer type game. Um, yeah, like there is definitely like a the a connection though. Like when you're sitting there with your friends playing the game, then like playing with them online. Like it's not the same as like you can't look at them directly and tell them to to eat it after after you yeah. just beat them. Like you, you can type it, <laughs> right? Know, is is that really satisfying? I don't know. Like, I, I guess I guess you got like video. Oh, well, not video. Like you you get like the audio chat and stuff like that. But it, I don't know. It's it's different when you're like you can sh- shove the person next to you. <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 different when it's face to face, and that's kind of the thing that I really wanted to play off. You know, like really, um, uh, like. Uh, I, I, when I when I did take it to Tokyo Game Show last year, um, and the reception for the mobile version of the game was somewhat like it was okay, it was like mild the response. But then, you know, I, I had like four four weeks before uh, PAX Australia, so I kind of like well, if I'm going to take it to PAX, then I'm going to do something crazy with this game. So I had like one like I. I spent like two weeks, converted into a split screen format, converted all the controls from you know the touch screen to like gamepad, and like uh, I got it working in two weeks. Had a small play test of it at the local um, with the local devs, and then after that I took it to PAX Australia, and then after that the it, it just exploded. Like I had massive crowds. Like it was a bit hard for me to contain. And because it was, I had my friend helping me, luckily enough, but because, uh, you know, I wasn't anticipating like the, um, this amount of people playing the game. And I had to like try and uh, manage like four players and like the, there was kind of a lineup building, like a crowd building. So I had to like funnel people and try, like, I've, I've never done that stuff before. And even dealing with like sort of, it's, press and stuff like that. It was just like, what? What's happening here? Like, you know, it's this, the, it's, this, it's the best kind of problem that you can have. You know, yeah, 
it, it was it was just such a bizarre thing, you know. Like it to me, it was the same game, but just you know, different uh, with the fact that it was now local multiplayer. And yeah, it was just such a different sort of reception from uh, one thing to the other. Yeah, and so, you and you've even gotten because uh, we talked about this when uh, before we. Um, before we started recording, but you even got attention from like YouTubers like uh, Video Game Donkey, who've got like a, I would say a pretty big following to it. So it, how does it feel to uh, to get that kind of attention? Yeah, it feels kind of uh, still surreal in a way because you know I'm I'm still a solo dev on this. Like I, I, like I'm I'm just working on this like you know doing all the art, coding, sound, and everything. And when like I've spent like three years building this game, and it you don't really know um, how like it will take to people. Like you know, when you're working on this and it's it's kept so close to you, and then when you start bringing it out to people, and then you don't you don't know how if people are really going to like it or not. <laughs> you know, so like it's sort of validating in a way that you're like, well. I guess that all these three years aren't for nothing then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right, exactly. Um, so are you are you planning on bringing Goat Punks to more than just PC? Uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, it's built for... It's actually built on Mac, so it will be on Mac, PC, also Linux. But uh, I have a... I, I've started building it on Xbox right now. But um, I might wait till I release it on Steam before I pres- uh, keep pushing the development of the Xbox uh, version. I, I want to like uh, make sure that the whole game is fairly solid before um, I take it to uh, before I release it on like, Xbox. Um, I've just recently managed to get in contact with PlayStation, so that's probably going to be next after xbox and uh we'll see what happens from there yeah and uh you also won best physics winner of uh of pax west at the intel booth so yeah yeah surprisingly enough that that the the guys at intel are really nice guys and they yeah <laughs> I, that, was, that was something that i wasn't expecting because um uh i, I didn't really think well I do have physics in my game. Uh, it's kind of, I guess, but like, I guess that sort of makes sense in a way. But um, they they had like other uh, awards that they were giving out, like um, best multiplayer game, which I thought I was hoping to to get. But uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm not complaining that I got the physics. Like, I I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm I'm happy that I got that. <laughs> well, congrats on that. And um, so, when are we? When are we going to be seeing Goat Punks? Hopefully, um, hopefully releasing it on Steam by the end of this year. Um, the big, the big things that are still in development are online multiplayer and uh, a few more game modes. Which, you know, currently the game, right as it is, only has the uh, King of the Hill. Uh, game mode, and uh, but I want to expand on that to have like four more, which would include like treasure hunt and two versus two survival mode and something else capture the flag um but the, these the, those game modes are relatively simple to to do the the, the major thing that's uh scare me a little is the um online multiplayer like it's just a little bit of a you know challenge to undertake by yourself and a, and a very expensive one too. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've actually managed to do some multiplayer before. So I have a rough understanding of how I'm going to do this. It's just uh, there's different sort of multiplayer setups, like uh, different tools that you can use. And every time you use like a different sort of set of tools, like it means that you have to refactor or change up your code to fit those tools. Because like you know, a multiplayer uh sort of set of tools like need to be like uh integrated uh 
quite well within the game. Like it needs to be almost developed within the ground up. And because I've been changing between different sort of uh, multiplayer tools, then it's like I kind of have to, uh, you know, tack it on in a way or like uh, reshape my game to like fit uh, those sets of tools. Yeah. Right. So, because um, are you still going to keep the the mountain format thing with it if you do decide to do the um, the other modes with it? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll definitely keep the the tower format. Like I think that works best. Uh, is um, for 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 example, like say the uh, the treasure hunt um, game mode. Uh, the way that would work is like I would scatter like you know hundreds of coins on the mountain, and what you would have to do, like each player would have to try and collect as many coins as possible. Uh, kept it. Well, I say uh, kept it about ten coins, um, and then you have to take those coins to the very top of the tower and like deposit it. Um, but the trick is like when you're when you're running around, and if you knock someone off, their coins get scattered or distributed around where you hit them, and then you get knocked down. But the other player can like you know just collect all your coins and steal all your coins. So that that's that's the idea that I'm playing with right now for uh, treasure hunt. Um, and like, uh, I guess for, for game modes, like say, uh, survival mode, I would have a, 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 a ground or like say lava or water at the bottom that just keeps constantly rising. And this will like make the, the platform shorter and shorter and will eliminate people as it goes along so it's it's, it's just a different type of a uh, way to play the game you know? right well um i'm super excited to play it and if you guys want to check out goat punks i will have a link down at the bottom for the game and uh yeah no definitely check it out goat punks cool. it's gonna be awesome. it's gonna be the next big thing and uh <laughs> Yeah, and uh, if you like the show, tell your friends about it, and uh, we'll be back next week. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening to this week's Gamer Weekly. This is Justin Vancer signing off.